Hey everybody, Brian Bauman from Bauman Farms, and um, I'm a little embarrassed, but uh, this is my hanging basket at home. And uh, like many of you, my kids got out of school, we went on a little holiday trip for a couple days. I came back and I, um, I was so sad. It was so beautiful when I left. And so I know that this happens to a lot of you, and I wanted to show you some of the tips and tricks that I have to kind of bring this hanging basket back to its glory because there's a couple different things going on. First and foremost, you'll notice that there's not very many blooms. When I left, this was covered in blooms, and there's one in particular culprit that is in there that is eating my flowers. I hate these little cutworms, but they, um, they're almost invisible. You have to really pay attention to see them, and um, if you look close, you'll see these little green guys moving around in here. It's absolutely disgusting, and um, I'm gonna show you a trick to get rid of them. Before we do that, I like to give it a nice trim. I know it's hard to trim your flowers back sometimes. A lot of people um, like almost have to close their eyes because you don't want to hurt it. But to be honest, we want to get rid of some of this damaged growth so we can get some new growth with new blossoms and be nice and full for the rest of the summer. So step one, a uh, handy pair of scissors and we're going to give her a little haircut. When I'm trimming my hanging basket back, a lot of the underneath growth is totally fine to trim back because it's not getting a lot of light anyway. And you also don't notice it as much. Coleus has a beautiful flower on it. It's really pretty, but um, I only like it for a little while. <laughs> so I go through and I trim all the blossoms off because, and if you do it right in between the nodes, you almost don't even notice that you're trimming it and it'll feel more fuller, it'll look a little thicker, and then it'll fill out even more throughout the summer. So don't be afraid to pinch the blossoms off on your coleus. So as you can see, I mean, I trimmed off a nice handful of some of that damaged growth. Step one accomplished. As for the cutworms, they're super hard to see. A lot of times they're eating the green foliage and they'll be nice and green like this little booger right here. You can't even see it. A lot of times people send me pictures of their baskets and say, I don't see any worms. I don't, I, I've looked, they're not there. They are there, let me trust you. But they will blend right in. And a lot of times I'm looking for leaves in the, uh, leaves, I'm looking for holes in the flowers. That's usually the first part. But they love those brand new shoots of blossoms. So they're gonna eat those off before you even notice it. And you will see you'll have a nice green basket with no flowers. So what I love to use is Captain Jack's. Captain Jack's is a bacteria that they found in a rum distillery that um, we're gonna spray on the basket. It's completely safe for us, for pets. It's not gonna provide any problems, which I love, but let me tell you, these little worms are gonna get what's coming to them because that bacteria and the worms do not mix. I am using um, just a ready-to-use bottle that I'm gonna mist down this basket because this is kind of my main problem child right now. But we also have it in a ready to spray, which is a little bottle you can hook on the end of your hose and you can hose down three or four baskets or if you have a wider area or a flower bed, that's, it's a lot easier than trying to crank this little spray bottle a whole bunch. So now we're just gonna mist everything down with this. I'm gonna get above it, on the side of it and underneath. The thing with Captain Jack's when you're spraying it is you really wanna get good coverage because the worms actually need to ingest the bacteria in order to die. So we want to spray it on everything possible that they may be eating. So I cover everything up really good. And now that we've trimmed it back, we've got the bugs taken care of. What I like to do now is give it a real good boost of fertilizer. And the fertilizer that we use at the farm, we sell in these really cool little bags. And let me show you kind of how I mix it up. Um, this is my Sunday morning routine every Sunday to fertilize all of my plants. I always like to start with a big bucket um, to mix my fertilizer in when I'm getting ready. So I have this nice little handy dandy bucket here and um, I love this plastic bucket because it's easy to move around the yard. And uh, just about the right amount of volume. So this is seven gallons altogether in this bucket. And then we have our fertilizer that we use at the farm. And I just make myself a little opening. I have a measuring spoon here. And it takes about one tablespoon of this per gallon of water. So I um, get some water in there and then I start counting the seven. Six, seven. Put our seven tablespoons in there. I use the hose kind of as it's filling up to kind of mix it up as we go. Um, and wait for it till it gets about up to the top and then make sure it's all mixed in really good. 
Uh, people often ask me what's the best time of the day to fertilize or water your baskets and I always tell them to do it first thing in the morning. I like to do it before I go to work because it doesn't get really hot and you don't have to deal with evaporation that way. You, you kind of get the most bang for your buck and the fertilizer really gets a chance to soak in. So this jug is just about full, which is great. We've got it all mixed up. You'll notice with our fertilizer, it's a real nice, uh, color, nice color blue. You don't want it to be too light. You probably didn't use enough. You don't want it to be too dark because if you use too much fertilizer, it can burn the roots. So this is just about the right color that I'm looking for. I have my dirty little uh, old milk jug can that I just cut the top out of. And this works great for kind of measuring it out for each of my hanging baskets. So, um, we get one jug full. This is about how much I like to use for each one of the hanging baskets. And now we'll pour it in. So when pouring the fertilizer in, you want to pour enough in that it soaks the whole thing, but you don't really want it coming out the bottom because that's just a waste of the fertilizer. Uh, so this is typically about the right amount when I'm watering it in the morning. And remember, I've sprayed this all down, so I don't want to wash that spray off. So I'm going to go right in the center and just do a nice kind of steady pour. And that's all it takes. Now we have our hanging basket. It's been trimmed up. We've got the spray to get rid of all the bugs. We've given it a nice boost of fertilizer so that it's going to sprout out. And I guarantee you in another week, it is gonna be big and beautiful again. For all of these products and our helpful tips and tricks, make sure you follow us online and head on out to Bauman Farms where we'll get you all taken care of.